Hi P3, welcome back to my lecture videos. So I am assuming you finished watching the opioid lecture being the first one, okay? I said watch this first. Now this one should be your second video, okay? Even though in my last opioid lecture there, video there, I talk about, uh, you know, cannabinoid. Do you save that cannabinoid? Uh, can cannabis lecture to the end okay uh, so here we're going to talk about uh, things about headache okay in particular migraine headache so without further talking in the intro let's go to the lecture hi guys let's begin with the lecture of uh, pharmacology of headache now technically this top this title I think it's a little bit um, strange in my opinion because there's no pharmacology of headache basically it's pathophysiology of headache and pharmacology of drug that can treat headache but uh, we kind of uh, just fuse the two titles together to make it a little bit shorter. So basically we'll talk about uh, something about headache and particularly in this lecture we are talking about migraine headache, okay, migraine headache um, and also uh, some of the drug that is for migraine uh, treatment. Alright, so a little bit introductions. Uh, let's think about why do we have headache, okay, what are the common causes of, uh, you know, that makes you feel headache. Alright, so one of those common causes is this little glass of beverages, okay, and well, there's a uh, beverages, I'll leave it like, like that. This particular beverages will be metabolized uh, with into a compound called acetaldehyde, and if you don't get rid of acetaldehyde in your body, it will make you feel very crappy okay the next morning um, hungover <laughs> all right uh, what other causes can you think of one mm, how about this one lack of sleep that's true right uh, you know you don't sleep well that night before if you haven't sleep well the night before uh, when you're watching this video I highly suggest you take a break put it down get some rest before you continue to watch because this will further put you into sleep all right viewers discretion now if you're watching this on the Tuesday that is supposed to uh, on the schedule and I think the most common reason for you to feel headache it's exam <sighs> right exam this one's particularly big headache um, I, I feel your pain I feel your pain I do feel your pain as an instructor for the course now a lot of people in the world, uh, perhaps you as well, uh, not as much as headache, but probably worry about this little guy. What can what it can cause? Right, it can cause the COVID nineteen diseases. Okay, um, so that is the vi the causative agents there. Now for me, there uh, sometimes there's a little bit more headache cause, particularly when all the uh, great school K-12 schools are uh, closed right now and uh, I'm spending so much, so much valuable time with my son uh, currently upstairs. I'm in my basement, as usual. Uh, yeah, my son. <laughs> That's actually, this picture actually was from last year. Uh, I haven't changed that much uh, from last year to this year, so I just kept using the same picture. Alright, so enough for these little small talk. I spent like three minutes doing small talks. Um, now, let's go into the learning objective. So, we'll talk about some of the pathophysiology of migraine, okay, pathology or pathophysiology, and then uh, some of the uh, key points in development, you know, what, what goes into uh, finding the drug that um, treat migraine. Um, some of the structural activity relationship, okay, of the agents that we are going to talk about. Uh, and then uh, some of the small differences between the uh, receptor uh, agonist there, serotonin receptor agonist, um, and again, structural activity relationship. Alright, so again, there, this is an overview of uh, some of the therapeutic agents that could be used uh, for treatment of migraine. Now, some are approved, uh, have indications, some are just off-label use. Uh, we can break it into two sides. Uh, some are abortive therapy, basically you stop the 
uh, migraine and then some uh, prophylactic that are used for prevention. Okay, now I highlighted those in red, which is really what are those those drugs that are commonly you use these days uh, for migraine they are serotonin agonists so i just give, give a few examples uh, there are those triptans triptans okay and uh historically ergo alkaloid can also be used but they are have been falling out of favorite so we won't talk about it in great detail we'll touch up on it uh i don't ask these uh, compounds on exams and other agents that we've seen it many times and say and acetaminophen and uh, some of the uh, miscellaneous agents um, prophylactically you've seen a lot of these agents right so I won't talk about it uh, in great details as well in this lecture so I'm trying to slim down the lectures a little bit now uh, on a miscellaneous agents we have a Botox okay and plus there is a uh, antibody coming at the end of the of the lectures okay all right all right so uh, what is the history really behind migraine okay so this little guy here Galen okay this Galen is uh, ancient Greek uh, Greek people okay uh, so this is Galen of Pergamon okay well anyway he is the probably the first person uh, to describe uh, this type of a condition it's uh, a hemicrania a painful disorder affecting approximately one half of the head okay so you have a head approximately one half of it so being affected so uh, in many cases they are concentrated on one side of the brain okay that here here there comes the hemicranium all right so this uh, you know ancient descriptions it's you know quite quite accurate even for in the today's standpoint okay and he Galen attributed these um, diseases it's from a essence of vapor or humor from the liver to the head of course we know that would not be true but uh, in the in those days okay um, it is what they think about All right coming to a more uh, semi modern type of a view okay uh, still it is a historical viewpoint uh, here we are looking at, at the classical vascular theory of migraine so here it's just looking at some of the um, the scans here historically the migraine was believed to be a result of primarily a vasculature event vasculature event like and the aura okay aura. we'll talk about aura in a second the aura of migraine was attributed to a intracerebral vasoconstrictions here showing you a vasoconstriction here and then um, the headache okay that comes after the aura was uh, believed to be a result from the reactive vasodilations okay here is the reactive vasodilations or everything that is in this graph here you can compare to the one on your left it's it's pretty obvious it's dilated in one way so this headache was a uh, result from the reactive vasodilations of the uh, carotid artery so this theory explained some of the characteristics associated with migraine but uh, you know this is no longer uh, quite true because of the advancing technology and research that um, that we have a little bit better theory uh, on this migraine um, how it come from all right so here the newer idea uh, we're looking at the blood flow okay blood flow during an aura and headache phase of a uh, migraine attack All right so still we're talking about vasculature but here we, we've observed that yes there is a vasoconstriction uh, associated with the aura phase but however in a study it's shown that the headache phase actually begin before the vasculature uh, starting to dilate so here this region that I bracketed here is the beginning of the headache phase so in the cerebral blood flow is still low ie the vaso is still kind of constricted and at this phase is where it started to dilate okay 
and so it's not necessarily the dilation that is lead causing the headache. So that is the um, that is the conclusion from this study. Now you know the more uh, you know the the complete theory now is so called the uh, um, the neural vascular theory or neurogenic theory okay so this theory is uh, states that the migraine is primarily a neurologic process that with secondary change to uh, cerebral perfusions okay so there are some underlying causes that cause the pain okay and the vasculature uh, vasculature changes is not the cause for the pain okay that is uh, that is you know as re-establishing the uh, causative um, uh, causation type of a relationship there. Right here, it shows you the flow chart. Okay, for a flow chart uh, that described uh, some of the sequence of events that we currently believe that leading to a migraine headache. Right. So first, uh, we believe there is some type of a triggering event. It could be stress. It could be lightning. It could be uh, many things. We don't know for sure, and it appears to be quite uh, somewhat vary uh, depending on the persons. And some triggering event lead to a cortical spreading uh, depression. I will come back to this uh, cortical spreading depression in the next slide. And this expression spread to different parts of the brain, okay, including the surface cortex. That lead to a aura, okay, a vision associated with the, uh, sympt uh, with the symptoms. And also spread to interior subcortex that could be leading to no aura. Some migraine doesn't have aura. And then uh, when it spreads to trigeminal nerve, now this trigeminal nerve here, this is uh, the major, uh, largest cranial nerve that is uh, responsible for um, sensory on the head and face. Okay, so this spreading goes to the trigeminal nerve and will lead to. Mm -mm 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 and some type of a pain rather than dilation. So we're saying that dil vasodilations come really in response to the pain. Okay. Now the way to treat this um, type of uh, uh, headache is to somehow apply a drug to inhibit. Okay, the steps. Okay, you cannot prevent this cortical spreading depressions in many cases, but well, let's stop it from triggering, leading all the way to the pain, to the headache, to the migraine headache, with drugs in the common class is the, uh, the tryptan, serotonin, or tryptan and, uh, receptor agonist there. Okay, serotonin receptor agonist, i.e. the tryptans, that's what I mean. All right, let's look at the pathophysiology of the uh, migraine of the aura and what is called this cortical spreading depressions. Okay, so appear uh, the auras appear from uh, to stem from the cortical spreading depression, i.e., the brainstorm. So let's look at the brain here. So the, here is a you know before the uh, you know activity is beginning. Now what happened is that there is a wave of depolarization uh, originating from the occipital. Uh, lobe spreading from its origins in the occipital lobe okay so that is the back of your brain okay and it's starting to spread to the prefrontal cortex along with the time and this spreading actually is a wave of excitations or depolarizations and these if uh, these neuronal activity is associated or correlates with uh, the vasodilations event so at the beginning at the occipital lobe where it's uh, where your vision is being processed is where you starting seeing the aura so there's uh, the uh, different type distorted visions in a way and then so and then slowly uh, go up to the front of your uh, of your brain so that is the, the spreading motions and here is a uh, scan of the images of seeing how it uh, you know start from start to finish and how it spread to uh, the uh, the area now here is a MRI figure of a cat model okay now for some reason uh, this figure is not showing any uh, movement that I would like to show but anyhow uh, after the application of a um, potassium chloride in this 
experiment here. They demonstrate the blood flow changes that is similar to those found in a migraine with aura. Right, so this experiment, you know, shows you how the um, reduced blood flow begins in the occipital cortex and spread forward. Now, don't worry about the rate. Okay, the the rate here is just for reference, and it begins with the aura and persists after for after a couple hours of the headache. So this reduced blood flow uh, does uh, persist in in a way. Okay, and the cerebral cerebral blood flow changes is not distributed to any cerebral artery, so it's somewhat localized in in a sense. Okay, let's look at the aura. Now, the aura has been described as some type of a uh, brilliant star or sparkling light of uh, visions, flashlight of visions. Now, I have been quite fortunate myself i have never experienced any migraine uh, in my life and but i know many of you have had experience of a migraine and you would know the aura better than i do uh, here are some of the pictures that i find online showing you how these aura begins and what type of uh, visual distortions uh, you could see okay you could personally testify that if that's the case. Now this is old thing, okay, migraine has been around forever and since as early as the 12th century here. This is a historical picture uh, of someone, you know, in at that time drawing uh, a, a perhaps the, a, a portrait of a vision described uh, in these uh, migraine attacks. So it is still quite similar to uh, what the modern people uh, described in, in in the way that they describe. So it has been believed that there are some type of a genetic component uh, in this type of attack and particularly with a certain genes. So the first gene here is that is uh, encode uh, calcium channels, so called the PQ channel. Now don't need to memorize this gene name, okay? But do know what channels are being, uh, uh, you know, having some type of a polymorphism. So we have a calcium channel that uh, can be um, uh, affected, and so does the sodium potassium uh, pump. Okay, that pump. Okay, it's also uh, could be altered as well. And here are some of the. Um, uh, details associated with these um, sodium potassium pump and uh, calcium channel. Now again, these are uh, fine detail that I don't uh, need you to memorize anything. Just know that, know this uh, big heading here, the sodium potassium pump and as well as the uh, PQ type calcium channel. Those has been shown to be a little bit different uh, on people that are experiencing migraine. All right, let's continue to look at the pathophysiology of migraine uh, in terms of how the trigeminal nerve is involved in the process. Now, most regions of the brain do not register or transmit pain signals. However, this network of trigeminal nerve does do so. Okay, these neurons carry pain signals from um, the membrane that is surrounding the brain. Okay, the menin uh, the meninge. Okay, as well as from the blood vessels that infuse these membrane here. Um, let me try to change to the point. Okay, these uh, meninges here. Meninges here. All right, and this pain is related through the trigeminal network in uh, in an area so called the trigeminal uh, nucleus in the brain brainstem. All right, from there, uh, the uh, the sensory is conveyed to the thalamus and then uh, to up to the uh, sensory uh, cortex and which that brings you the awareness of the pain and other sensations associated with it. Now how these trigeminal nerves are being activated, it's a little things that under debate. Now in terms of the uh, phys the, the phys anatomical uh, components of these trigeminal nerves is that they are the C fiber, so they are relatively slower type of a um, uh, neuroconducting fibers. And down to the world, what has been believed uh, with these type of uh, trigeminal um, uh, nerve activations is through a process so called a sterile inflammation, inflammations there. So there's no infections in that point, but some, uh, you know, 
uh, neurological uh, this uh, abnormality leading to a release of uh, substance P's, neurokinins, and other calcitonin gene regulated uh, polypeptide or the CGRP. So these uh, neuropeptides has been identified to be in a uh, upregulated amount due, uh, that is causing these sterile inflammation and therefore leading to um, uh, it is believed that is leading to the activations of the trigeminal nerve and therefore leading to to the pink full sensations all right okay here is a summary graph of a flow chart of how uh, different events are interlinked together so there's a you know first there is a some type of abnormal uh, cortical activity uh, basically the the main thing here is the hyper excitability okay uh, and that leading to a cortical spreading de uh, depressions, leading to activation, sensitization of the trigeminal nerve. Right, in here we have substance, okay, we have neuropeptide substance here, the substance P uh, and all these, uh, etc. And that lead to uh, the uh, feeling of the headache. All right, so in between those events here, we also observe vasodilations and, you know, some type of uh, sensitizations that kind of feed into each other as well. All right, so that is the uh, breakdown flow chart of how migraine attacks begin. So the main thing here is, remember, the hyperexcitability, cortical uh, spreading depressions, activation of the, the, the nerve, and then uh, with compounds that leading to these activations and sterile inflammations, and lastly leading to this headache, okay? And the aura, aura happened right here, happened before the um, the headache, okay? Some, you know, during this cortical spreading um, depression phase, okay, at the very beginning of those. All right. Now, it could happen or it doesn't necessarily happen all the time. So here is the question time. Okay, I know I've been talking too long. All right, guys, you see me holding a mic in front of me. It is uh, who wants to be a millionaire time. So I've debated, like, should I start from 100 again for you guys or if I should just go up? Well, I think let's just go up, you know, to the $2,000 questions, okay? Again, there is this eye icon up there. You can pull down and scroll down, you know, or is right there um, and you can participate in these questions in real time I think that is really important okay all right so let's uh, look at the first questions or the two thousand dollar question the pain a migraine headache is related to a a beta fiber B, which is the CGLP, calcitonin gene related neuropeptides. C, decreasing GABA. And D, all of the above. Hmm, maybe it is a little bit more challenging than before. Well, remember, that's a $2,000 question, so it's supposed to be a little bit more challenging. Alright, one. Two, three, four, five. Do you have a final answer? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? C, CGLP. CGLP. All right. So, uh, the pain that is associated with um, the condition uh, with the migraine is through uh, the trigeminal nerve, which is a C fiber. Right, and we're not talking about decreasing GABA, with, you know, there's no GABA involvement in this one, all right? And the neuropeptide, okay, that, that are causing uh, sterile inflammations, that's uh, this CGLP is one of those, all right? So I hope you get it. Well, and then let's go back to the lecture. So we're back to the slide. Now, 
we are here to begin to talk about what the neurotransmitter that are uh, having a role within the migraine okay serotonin so serotonin is the neurotransmitter in this story here now, i won't read about it, all the line here these are some of the observations uh, we see uh, of how um, serotonin uh, affecting the migraine here the main message what i take from this uh, whole couple bullet point is that has been shown that iv injections of serotonin can abort can stop the symptoms of headache so this really established the role of serotonin and uh, maybe we can find some serotonin receptor agonist that can help with the conditions right right so here we are moving into the drugs which is the receptor agonist here now there are many subtypes right many subtypes of serotonin receptors and Break it down, we have non-selective agents, things like in the orgo ergotamine, okay, ergotamine uh, structures and LSD, okay, we're, we're not using this as well, okay, of course. And we have other that are selective. Now, we would like to have selective, in particularly the biggest uh, class of drug that in the, that is in the treatment of migraine headache is this triptans, okay, we have uh, this 5-HT1B and 1D, Angonist. Okay, we're going to talk about these things in greater detail, but uh, it never hurt to circle, double highlight this, the tryptan property, which is 5-HT1B, 1D, Angonist. All right. All right, let's look at the uh, medicinal chemistry side of the story first, all right? So here is the first figure here is the um, serotonin, okay, is the serotonin. I highlighted the center uh, portions of serotonin, so this is so-called the central indole ring structures, okay? This central indole ring structures is inherited in all all agents okay all of the agents have this so-called this bicyclic ring structures all right so that is uh the the center part that is really Im important here now in terms of the drug the sumatriptan uh, and all the triptan uh, drug they have a uh, tertiary amine side chain substitution at position uh, three okay so here uh, we have serotonin which is a primary amine and in our drug we have a tertiary amine there all right. There's also other differences structurally when you compare it to serotonin, which is a uh, methane sulfonamide group at position five of the uh, of the bicyclic ring compared to just a OH group. Okay, so these are some of the um, differences in terms of uh, the tryptan and compared to serotonin, but they are still quite similar in my opinion. Right, at least the center part of it is. Is the same which is highlighted in red and I keep circling I think feel like the slide gets busier as the lecture goes on all right again here are some of the comparisons uh, of the different structures or different triptans okay the only big difference is the uh, the ring substitution the uh, position 5 substitutions right the rest of it they're all the same as the um, sumer tryptan there now you you are not going to be asked to you know, differentiate different type of the tryptan, okay? I never asked you the name, but you do need to realize the principles behind the structural activity relationship, like I always um, said. All right, so here is the uh, structural activity relationship here. Uh, what happened, uh, you know, we believe is that replacing the OH group at position 5 with some type of amino group uh, you know really doesn't uh, alter the affinity that much but you know replacing with this group does uh, affect the selectivity okay I bold it here increase the selectivity for 5-HT 1D receptor versus the 2A okay remember what we talked about 2A a lot alright so here uh, it's the the catch there so this is the the main message okay because of this substitution it changed the selectivity all right I started bolded okay I hope you can um, remember this point again here is just the uh, you know some of the uh, highlight of uh, serotonin receptors there are 18 known serotonin receptors there's way too many and 1a we have you know talked about roles in anxiety depressions uh, 1d we have 
uh, roles in the migraine, okay? And 2A, they are just distributed, uh, you know, everywhere, okay? Uh, so it's quite of uh, the ubiquitous uh, distribution, that's what it means. Right, so don't worry too much about the 5-HT3 uh, 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 type of a receptors here. Uh, the role here, it could be playing a role with emesis. So this one really shouldn't be bolded in a way. But uh, this is this point is FYI here. I know there are too many material in this uh, two weeks. So I try to slim down uh, the unnecessary information. Not unnecessary, but less important information in my opinion. All right, let's look at some of the pharmacology or pharmacodynamic of uh, tryptin during a migraine attack. Now, again, here is to um, something you need to commit to memory. All right, it's this tryptin, they are 5-HT1B slash 1D agonist. 1B, 1D agonist. All right, so the actions here, they, they are a little bit um, different, okay? Now, on the 5-HT1B uh, postsynaptic, okay, and the uh, uh, 5-HT1D autoreceptors are the molecular target for the tryptans here. So what it means is that you have, I'm drawing out two uh, side here, but what I don't really need to uh, draw out here is the presynaptic, okay? We have uh, one, one D here. Well, there's a terrible D here. That is a presynaptic. Now, postsynaptic here, we are showing a uh, Blood vessels here. Now we are not talking about neuronal neuronal type of a uh, junctions. Okay, neuromuscular junctions. The postsynaptic here is one B. Okay, that is what it, what this uh, prettier figure means. Okay, let me circle this for you. This is postsynaptic five HT one B, and this is the presynaptic five uh, HT one D autoreceptor. Yeah, get these pre and post clear in your head okay uh, it's a little bit um, confusing sometimes now the uh, actions of trimetriptans and all these tryptin is to bind to these uh, receptors having a agonistic effect now first first let's look at the actions on 5-HT1D autoreceptors okay uh, now binding of an agonist on autoreceptor okay what is the principles of it right you you binding an agonist you block the release of these uh, nociceptive or vasoactive neuropeptides that we just talked about in a earlier slide right binding of these auto autoreceptor you regulate the release of neurotransmitters in this case these neuropeptide so same principles that we've been uh, you know looking at uh, the whole time in this module again so very similar uh, uh, slides here now binding to post synaptic uh, or on those uh, 5-HT1B receptors that are on the vasculatures all right can stimulate constrictions of cranial arteries okay we've observed the um the vasodilation event so well let's help with this uh, vasodilation event as well so activations of postsynaptic uh, 5-ht1b okay throughout the uh, perth uh, will lead to uh, the uh, vasculature vasoconstrictions all right so it could be uh you know s systemic in a way so it could be uh, lead to uh chest tightness and also uh, coronary artery and hypertensions in a sense but in the cerebral uh, you know part of it you know this decreased the vasculature permeability and decreased pain and inflammation so we achieve part uh, of our goal in terms of stopping abortive stopping the pain while it's happening so those that we been talking about are the abortive uh, way okay ways to stop the, the pain in terms of preventative preventative measures that we can do for migraine really it's looking back a little bit okay what is you know causing these type of attack you know they are associated with these uh, release of um, nociceptive or vasoactive peptide okay so we should be uh, looking at ways okay to prevent these neuropeptide release so that it doesn't lead to the downstream event so this is the central principles of how we do these um, uh, preventative measures all right, 
I've talked a long time again. Let's go to question questions. Okay. Okay. Well, stay awake. Okay. This lecture is not that long. Okay. We're going to have our second questions again. Pull down your menu and participate in this questions. And we are moving to our four thousand dollar questions. Oh, so I, it may be a little bit harder than before. We'll see. What of receptors regulate? So basically, it's uh, which receptor regulates the release of CGRP? Got a little bit typo there. I'm not gonna correct it anymore. All right. Um, first, A is 5HT1D. B is 5HT1B. B for boy. And C is 5HT2A. And D is 5HT. T2B, which receptor regulates the release of CGRP? Which receptor? Hmm. What does it do? Yeah, we we know it has role in causing the pain, right? So, what receptor it's related to the release of that? I think I've given you enough hint. What receptor? Is doing the release function pre or post, right? Think of it that way. If you're paying attention in the last 15-20 minutes, you should be able to answer that without much of a problem. One, two, three, four, five. Final answer. Do you have one? You got it. That is B. Five HT one B. All right, that is the presynaptic neurons. Okay, that is related to the release, release of this neuropeptide. All right, let's go back to the lecture. All right, coming back, we're going to do、uh, some very very brief type of a、uh, discussions on、uh, ergo alkaloid. So these drugs can be used for treatment of migraine, but unfortunately they are they don't they are not selective binding. So binding to a lot of different types of serotonin receptor does have a detrimental effect and many side effect. Okay, so what are these ergo alkaloid? Now ergo is a product of a、um, fungus. That in fact edible grain. So, ah,、uh, so basically they, you know, they they are fungal product. That's all. Now they um some of the the history and story. I'm not going to、uh, read about it too much at、uh, right now. And ergotamine, okay, was first isolated long time ago, more than a hundred years ago, and they have been shown to ah、uh, at that time we were like you know we're talking about ninety years ago have ah、uh, you know we find some ah、uh, effective. Agents that can help with the、uh, migraine. Okay, now here are some of the actions that are, or、uh, you know the development of ergoid、uh, product. Again, I I'm not going to read. Just read the slide to you. You can、uh, read about it. Okay, now the, here is the problem. I don't want you to memorize. Okay, never memorize this table. F Y I in this table. What happened with this ergo alkaloid is that. They are not selective. Okay, they bind to 5-HT receptors. They bind to dopaminergic receptors. They bind to alpha-adrenergic receptors. Like in 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 a way that they they the the pharmacodynamic they are quite complicated. Sometimes it binds as a partial agonist and antagonist and partial agonist. So the end story is that these ergoid alkaloid are. Just ubiquitous binder to many type of receptor. Yes, it can help with the symptoms of migraine, but on the other hand, it also lead to many many unwanted side effects. So it has been falling out of favor、uh, favor in use because we have tryptan now. Now looking at these ergotamine structures and you know what its similarity there is. Now it's a no, it is a little bit far stretched. They do have structural similarity to uh the uh serotonin agonist, so which is highlighted in these red squiggly line, and I pointed out. Now I know it is far stretched. You know how can this this L cane type of a、uh, stretch, you know make make the, these uh. But but that's what、uh, I've been、uh, able to locate on the textbook, right? So 
this is kind of fast stretch. I I just want to touch base upon, and I don't、uh, want you to memorize in terms、uh, structurally where they look located. All right, the effect of ergoid alkaloids they can、um, affect again the serotonin, dopamine,、uh, and adrenergic receptors, and it have a very complicated,、uh, you know. In a way to describe these mechanism of action, so so it it makes it difficult in a way. So again, here are just run down list of adverse effect, vasculature、uh, events,、uh, and also what its effect on neurogenic inflammations. Basically, it's trying to decrease, okay, block the nociceptive neuropeptide. So so the end result when it's when you are seeing the ther therapeutic effect,、uh, you know the the It's happening the same case as the tryptan, but on the other hand, there's so much more unwanted side effect. Right? Again, I I think this is FYI information, so don't worry too much. So we have other agents that can help with the migraine symptoms, and here is one of the example, midrin. So midrin is a combination of product, and one of the compound here, uh. Here I circled it. I don't want to butcher the name. Now this compound、uh, does have some secondary、uh, amine structure that are important as a vasoconstrictor. So so you you are you know treating one of the events that is happening during、uh, the migraine headache attack. Okay, so I think this is similar information. So simple analgesics and such as NSAIDs and aspirin can also help with the migraine. And okay,、uh, now here the pharmacology really what happened with the these agent is that they decrease the vasculature、uh, permeability. Okay, through these、uh, inhibition of cyclooxygenase and downstream events, and therefore decreasing inflammation. So so this is when it's already dilated. Okay, it will help、um, to.、Um, Decrease the、um, the inflammations on a secondary level here because it has a platelet uh, inhibiting uh, platelet aggregation, decreasing activated platelet. So from the beginning, it will decrease uh, uh, serotonin. Okay, so this is really before the vasodilation. So remember the、um, the before the vasodilations happen is first having a vasoconstrictions, right? Now, if you have NSAID going along with it,、uh, you know this secondary effect is to reduce the initial vasoconstriction that we're talking about. I N I T initial very terrible handwriting. All right, so that's the initial vasoconstrictions. And then we have、uh, acetaminophen pharmacologies.、Uh, it has appeared to be facilitating through some endocannabinoid system.、Uh, the the you know there's not much great detail, but what what we observed that、uh, it can help、um, in some way. So I'm not going to、uh, spend too much time in talking about、um, barbiturate again because we know it.、Uh, it basically it can block amper, basically blocking some of the、um, excitatory、um, events, but it have more、uh, other complications al along with using barbiturate. Prophylactically,、uh, the You know there are some agents that can be helpful, such as、um, beta blocker. Now,、uh, propranolol and timolol are FDA approved for migraine prophylaxis. Now, not all beta blockers are effective、uh, anti-migraine agents, so、um, the exact mechanisms are not as clear、uh, in a way.、Um, but we believe that it modulates、uh, adrenergic and serotonergic tones, and therefore raising some threshold. Uh, for a、uh, migraine attack, other anti-convulsants. Okay, again here I'm just showing you at how block some activated or excitatory channels, and we talk about sodium have a role. Sodium channel have a role, so basically blocking sodium channel. Uh, again decreasing some of the、um, excitatory events. Antidepressants, you know, perhaps downregulating、uh, certain,、uh, you know, serotonin、uh, postsynaptic receptor. So if you、uh, that may help with the、uh, prophylactics. All right. Again, 
here are just some of the agents that I listed here. Again, all these are FYI. I'm not going to focus uh, greatly when I need to ask you on exam. Uh, in any cases, okay, uh, doesn't matter. I'll be doing a record exams or a online exams in that regard. Okay, other prophylaxis agents including Bt botulinum toxins. So these toxins have a high affinity for neuromuscular uh, junction that prevents the release of acetylcholine. Basically, they are preventing some of the contractions that comes it at the initial okay initial phase of this. Um, migraine attack. Remember it is first vasal constriction that we observed and then vasal dilation. So they are preventing these this event from happening and therefore there is no downstream events that are leading to it. Okay. And um, secondary like we believe that um, the botulism toxin can also prevent the release of this uh, CGLP uh, and glutamate. So this is the peptide that have a role in causing the um, sterile inflammation. So uh, you know by preventing the release of that, that can also help with uh, preventing uh, migraine attack. And here is the new agent so this is a biologic so this is an antibody I think it was approved a year or two ago uh, a, a I won't butcher this name again okay I have trouble saying all these names this is an antibody injection so uh, it is a hundred percent human monoclonal antibody now I don't think it's been very commonly used uh, in the in practice yet and and like any other new biologic, they are terribly um, expensive. So the main mechanism is it bind uh, potently and selectively to this CGLP receptor, okay, and inhibit its function. Remember, we keep talking about the CGLP peptide having its role. Uh, well, these peptide bind to receptor, leading to inflammation. Let's stop this peptide from its action. So that is the whole idea of this um, antibody and how it works. All right, here is a summary slide, uh, you know, kind of group all the prophylactic and acute episode and different agents there, uh, you know, just for FYI purpose as well. Okay, so that is a wrap up for this uh, headache topic or migraine topic. And let's move on to the question to wrap up uh, this uh, lecture. Okay, okay. J we just wrap up with the all the content material for headache. I told you this one is not that long, and we are up to the eight thousand dollar questions. And are you ready for that? And the question here is, which one is modulated in migraine treatment and prevention? Which one of the following? So I kind of abbreviated to fit in this column there that's why the, the question sounded a little bit look, looks a little bit different weird okay a substance P B neurokinin a C CGRP and D serotonin basically which of the following choices are it's modulated in migraine treatment and prevention all right, so that is that is very important. Which one? It's being somewhat targeted. I give you five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Is it too fast? All right, you should be able to go back to your notes. I'll give you two more seconds. One and two. Final answer. no final answer <laughs> all right so the final answer is C all right there's some technical error here well it happens with games right uh, CGLP well notice the CGLP it's being modulated with uh, our triptans okay and as well as we have you know the antibodies okay that are modulating the receptor so this is one of the only one that is in this list that is being modulated for uh, treatment or abortive therapy or um, as well as in the preventative therapy there. Clear? Got it? C. Alright, in this case, C. Alright, I didn't yellow it, but it's C. Okay? 
all right so that is all for the questions and let's wrap up with the lecture with a final message all right guys we just finished all our game here for who wants to be a millionaire fake version so no one's getting any money for sure um i hope you are liking uh this type of a game uh i feel like i'm trying to interacting uh with you i hope you are getting that feeling uh even though we are not doing live lectures okay um so why am i doing this uh just a little bit reflection so i feel like uh i've come into some articles about uh online teaching online learning and one of the uh, fatal mistakes uh, sometimes instructors make is uh, the so-called MIA, missing in actions. A lot of the time student feels instructors are so distant uh, and not being connected with the class material. And that's why I am showing my face to you guys, showing my basements to you guys. Uh, the purpose here is so that we could uh, connect, we could relate to each other a little bit more, even though it is more or less a one-way interaction. You see me through the camera I unfortunately cannot see you uh, maybe that's a good thing you're not in a way that that is presentable perhaps but anyway um, stay safe and stay tuned for my last video with you guys talking on cannabis that is the best topic see you next time